Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Today, we're going to have a double double cassette deck video. Now, as you can see, right here, we're having two Sony double cassette decks. I found these at the dump. I went there one week and found one, went the next week, found another one. So that's kind of funny. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, take a bit of a closer look. Now, looking at the two, you can clearly see the upper one is the newer one. The lower one is the older and probably also the cheaper one of the two. So you can see it's still using the classic mechanical setup for the tape transport, while this one has uh, all electronic auto reverse and that kind of stuff. It has rounded buttons, so you can see that. Uh, that's a giveaway that it's newer than uh, this one. And uh, this one is also a lot more basic. You can probably see that. One thing these two have in common is the view meter, and it's kind of hard to see that because uh, the camera wants to focus on uh, the reflection on there. Now it looks like there were a lot of little LEDs going on in there, but uh, that's wrong. Actually, there are always two of these bars grouped together and lit up by just one LED, so uh, you can kind of see it by the scale on there as well. That's the same with this one as well. If I could get a good focus on there, there we go. And uh, this one also has like various different uh, control lights that light up when you have it running. Now, the two cassette decks have uh, another thing in common aside from the cheap level meter, and that's bad belts. On this one, the A deck just won't do anything. The B deck still seems to work, but uh, I don't think it's going to do that all too reliably. This one has all bad belts on both decks. You can see there are still cassettes inside of there. And uh, these are actually stuck in there. It won't open anymore because uh, with the bad belts, the head assemblies are, are just stuck halfway up and uh, you can't get them to go down anymore. Now, uh, just a quick look at the model numbers, if I can find them. I have a TCWR570, and uh, down here we have a TCW310. Now, another, <laughs> another funny thing. Uh, let me turn this uh, upper one around. So you can see the previous owners definitely had some creative wiring going on there. Seems like they didn't pay too much attention to what it was saying in the manual. You can see we have uh, one cable going to both the right channels and one cable going to both the left channels. I've never seen that before. Here we have the more modern one of the two. And uh, as you can see, I took the top cover off and uh, well, what should I say? It's definitely looking a lot better than I thought it would. Looking from the side, you can see Sony had some uh, very creative design going on there. This uh, circuit board is actually supposed to stand up like that, which is kind of funny. But uh, yeah, we're having four motors in this thing, which is definitely pretty good. And... Uh, the belts are terribly loose in there. I already tried that. And uh, you can see the transistors of the power supply are hooked up to the back panel using that metal part. So shouldn't have too many heat related problems. There we have some decent filter capacitors. The transformer is pretty small, but uh, I guess it's enough. I mean, this cassette deck is not putting too much of a heavy load on the power supply. So yeah, this thing might actually be worth being repaired. Well, here we have the older one of the two. So is the older one going to be the better one, quality-wise? No, it isn't. This is just a cheap piece of rubbish. I mean, tiny little transformer. The circuit board right there definitely isn't all too full with components. There are a lot of blank spaces all over it. 
<laughs> it seems like the like they put all the resistors they needed into that spot. Record amplifier. Hmm. Those resistors are certainly not going to amplify anything. That's kind of a funny design right there. The mechanisms are just plain cheap. One thing I forgot to mention, the motors are very, 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 very noisy. I don't know what's going on with those things. It might be so cheap that they are already worn out or something. The flywheels, well, I guess those are not going to fly very well at all. That's just cheap. Only good thing about this cassette deck is that uh, replacing the belts should be quite an easy task. Just gotta get the belt in between the motor and the mechanism and around the flywheel and that's it. It doesn't seem like uh, you know, I'd have to take out the motor or something like that. But uh, yeah, repairs should be quite easy, but I really don't think this is uh, going to be worth my time. So uh, we might take a bit of a closer look at the features and functions in some uh, better lighting. And uh, I guess then this thing is going to return to the dump. Yes, this is, this is just uh, cheap. The front is made out of plastic as well. And this actually came with a stereo system that uh, really wasn't bad at all. You can see the amplifier is sitting over there. And some uh, some bad white balance there. But uh, the amplifier really isn't bad. Technically. It's not working for some reason. Um, it... Uh, I don't know. It uh, seems like it's getting no power, even though the power supply appears to be perfectly fine. Kind of a weird problem. That doesn't work at the moment. Down there I also have a... Uh, that's a that's a toolbox. Behind it there I also have a Sony tuner, which really isn't bad at all. So, uh, I don't know. Previous owner... Uh, seems like the previous owner tried to save money on the cassette deck. Well, however, I guess that's it for this thing. So, uh, I'm going to put this to the side and uh, then we're going to... Uh, take a bit of a closer look at the newer one of the two. And here we have one of the two mechanisms taken out. And uh, it is a simple mechanism, not too much in the way of quality going on there, but uh, well, it does work. Although that little gear, little teeth on there are really long, so I guess that's uh, that's going to break quite easily. I guess. But who knows? It's not too complicated to uh, take this whole thing apart because as you can see they've always used these uh, plugs that you can actually pull out even for the heads and uh, so taking the circuit board out should be pretty pretty easy and uh, well guess I'm going to do that and uh, then I'm going to take off this white plastic part which is holding the motors in place and uh, then I should be able to reach the belts and uh, to replace them. I got the white plastic part taken off and this is... record LED of the camcorders reflecting on there. This is the mechanism the inside and see, they definitely didn't try to save oil in there. It's all nicely lubricated. And uh, both... Well, actually, not sure about this one. This could be hard plastic, but this actually is a real uh, metal flywheel. Quite a massive little thing. Of course, nothing compared to uh, the flywheels in like 70s or early 80s cassette decks, but it is good. As you can see, I got a new belt in there, which, uh, well, I well, I will have to test this. Um, really not sure. I think this might be a little bit too loose. Um, the other belt, that uh, does not seem to need to be replaced. But uh, anyway, now I want to put this back together and uh, see if it works. And if it doesn't, 
Well, I do have a belt that's a little bit smaller, but uh, I have only one of that size, so uh, well, maybe I'll only be able to uh, get one of the two decks to, uh, to work. And here we have the mechanism all put back together. Now, the belt that I first wanted to put into here turned out to be too loose, so I found another one that seems to work okay in here. You can kind of see it down there. I've already hooked the motor up to, uh, to the power supply and uh, tried that out, and it does work. It does turn the flywheel and stuff reliably. So now I want to go ahead and uh, put this whole thing back into the cassette deck and uh, want to find out if it's uh, if it's working in there now. Well, as you can see, I installed the mechanism in the cassette deck for a first test, and so far it does seem to work. It's uh, currently in rewind mode, and I just want to go ahead and put it into playback mode. And there it goes. This, uh, this uh, was a little bit confusing at the first uh, the first test. I used the cassette that uh, came in the deck, this uh, piece of garbage, and uh, for some reason the idler wheels wouldn't engage. But uh, with this cassette it does work, so apparently this, uh, this thing is just broken. So uh, now I want to go ahead and put this whole thing back into the cassette deck. Okay, I've tried improving on the lighting a little bit, but uh, as you can see, it's still nowhere near being perfect. Of course, lighting lighting up those uh, black face plates is always very difficult, and uh, this workshop is just a very, very dark room. But uh, anyway, as you can see, we have this mechanism back in place, and uh, it's all working the way it should, at least mechanically. I haven't tried playing back something. And as you can see, it does work. Level meters are showing something. And uh, I'm now starting to work on the B deck, on the record deck. I've already gotten the cassette out of there that was stuck in there. And... Uh, uh, the mo uh, the the heads are like halfway up, and uh, if I turn the cassette deck off, turn it back on, I guess you're able to hear it's trying to uh, move the heads around, but it uh, it's just not able to do it. So uh, now going to uh, go ahead and uh, try to pull this deck out of there. Which is going to be a bit more uh, a bit more complicated because the main circuit board is getting into the way. But uh, anyway, let's see what happens. Now here we have the record cassette deck taken out. Taking it out was a little bit uh, more complicated than I expected. But uh, this is basically the exact same thing as the B or uh, the A deck, the playback deck except it has a bit of a record upgrade on the back. There is a second circuit board right there containing the bias oscillator, it seems. And, uh, of course, the other circuit board contains other parts that are for the record circuitry, such as this relay, which you can't really see. Right there is a relay. That's a, that's a kind, of, kind of component that I wouldn't expect in such a modern cassette deck. But uh, anyway, there it is, a relay. <laughs> anyway, since the repair process is going to be pretty much the same as on the A cassette deck, and I'm really running out of uh, space on my memory card here, I'm just going to go and uh, do the repairs, and uh, I'll be back when I'm done with this. And here we are, I finally got this cassette deck working. The uh, second cassette deck turned out to be a little bit complicated because uh, 
Well, it really got me confused because it was doing something that I wasn't expecting. And uh, I took this apart again and again and again and thought, well, what is wrong there? Well, it turned out to be a power on self test. <laughs> Oh dear, it is working now, although it's uh, it's probably running a little bit too slow. So, um... The belt in this cassette deck, and this one is not perfect, that's for sure. Anyway, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and see you again soon. Really running out of uh, memory on my memory card here, so uh, that's why I'm hurrying like this. So, uh, anyway, bye-bye. It's probably going to be a second part with uh, some more repairs, and of course there is going to be a full demonstration of this cassette deck.